the standard method of uh, diagnosing prostate cancer is uh, sextant transrectal ultrasound guided biopsies, which carries a risk of infection, which is proving to be significant. The other thing about uh, diagnosing prostate cancer in this way is that the biopsies are pretty much blind. Although ultrasound guided, ultrasound cannot lead us into an area of interest in the prostate gland, therefore the biopsy is pretty random. There has been a vogue of uh, multiparametric MRI and finding out areas of interest in the prostate gland uh, as far as cancer is concerned for quite some time. Two years ago, uh, we decided to uh, invest in uh, an upgraded ultrasound machine manufactured by Hitachi, which would enable us to fuse the MRI images with an ultrasound, transrectal ultrasound live. And we've been doing uh, multiparametric MRI uh, scans of prostate our expert radiologists are identifying areas of interest, grading them according to the level of suspicion, and we have been able to uh, map the area and mark it uh, on an MRI scan, and then fuse this area live with real-time ultrasound, and being able to guide our needle into these specific areas. This is a technique of fusion biopsy that uh, myself and my colleagues have adopted in Russell Soul Hospital uh, since the middle of 2013. The last two years we have uh, done about 200 biopsies uh, using this technique and our normal uh, pickup rate for cancer uh, using this technique is about 50% as opposed to 25% by a standard sextant transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy. Not only that, of, uh, of most important feature that we have found with this fusion biopsy is that we had the, the cancers that are diagnosed, 70% of them from the uh, areas of interest uh, in, in a fused manner uh, is Gleason 4 cancer, which is picked up in uh, standard biopsy in uh, less than 20%. And I think this is the major breakthrough of this technique is that we are finding more significant prostate cancer which is enabling us to a more powerful decision making as regarding the management of these patients. Needle guide is first assembled by placing a protective sheath on the probe with an appropriate amount of ultrasound jelly. Once the sheath has been applied, the needle guide is first inserted with the distal end and then the proximal end is attached into a notch onto the probe. There is a magnetic sensor which attaches onto the probe via the attachment scene in the video. Please pay attention to the probe. There is a notch on one end of the sensor which needs to face you as you place it into the probe attachment. This attachment fits onto the probe handle on the opposite side to the ultrasound array at the end of the probe. Towards the back of the ultrasound machine there is a track star box. This has a switch to turn it on. There is an LED light. Initially this will flash with a yellow color and then it will flash with a green color. Once the MRI fusion track star box has linked to the machine and the probe, then the green light will be a solid color. It is most important that this is the case, otherwise the link has not been successfully completed.
The magnetic field generator, which is placed next to the patient and comes on a stand, must be connected to the socket marked transmitter. There is a notch at the end of the cable, which needs to be at the 12 o'clock position. The ultrasound probe has two attachments to the machine, marked number one and number three. These need to be connected to the machine as shown. In our practice, the MRI scans are downloaded onto a CD, which is placed into the DVD tray as shown. It is possible to connect the ultrasound machine to your PAX system via a DICOM attachment. Now we see the magnetic field generator placed next to the patient at approximately the level of the prostate. This is on the abdominal side of the patient. The procedure starts by inserting the DVD into the machine. By using the mouse and the enter button one has to select the ultrasound icon. Following this, there's a drop-down menu and the relevant patient's scan is selected. The ISO volumetric sequences are the ones with 72 images. These are selected and loaded as shown. By selecting the volume one button, all the images are loaded onto the screen. I often select the zoom button to enlarge the image so that it fills most of the screen. Following this, my preference is to place all the grid lines in the center of the prostate gland and then to scroll through the prostate to get a feel for the abnormal area. The first point is to mark the target lesion with the spherical marker as shown. Following this, we need to mark a particular anatomical point within the prostate, which can then also be easily identified on the live ultrasound image. My preference is to mark the bladder neck and the urethra if it is clearly seen. I tend to mark the apex of the bladder neck with the square marker and the prostatic urethra with the line marker. I save the workflow onto the ultrasound machine and then use the mouse to select the start button. This then takes us into the live screen. On the left hand side we see the MRI image of the prostate and on the right side is the live ultrasound image. I will often use the z-axis control to tilt the MRI image of the prostate so that uh, the base of the prostate is horizontal and this matches well with the live ultrasound image. Following this, the transrectal probe is passed into the patient's rectum I initially inject local anesthetic underneath the seminal vesicles on both sides to raise a bleb. Once I've done this, I identify the bladder neck on the live ultrasound image and move the MRI image using the roller ball so that I can place the square marker on the bladder neck on the live ultrasound image. By pressing the adjust button, both the MRI image and the ultrasound image will move simultaneously. I will then adjust the ultrasound probe so that I can identify the square marker at the bladder neck and the straight line marker of the urethra on the MRI and then press the virtual freeze button. This then freezes the MRI image. I can then adjust the ultrasound probe which then moves the ultrasound image to the appropriate place and then I can place the square and straight line marker 
at the bladder neck and prostatic urethra on the ultrasound and press the adjust and now both the MRI and ultrasound the images correspond to each other. Following this I can adjust the ultrasound probe to find the lesion. Do be aware that if your lesion is very peripheral then compression of the prostate gland can lead to poor ultrasound MRI registration. In this case we can find the target area in the peripheral zone of the prostate towards the base. As you can see the dotted line signifying the biopsy track is away from the target area. At this point one has to have a mental record of the target area and then move the probe into the patient to align the biopsy track with the target area. When you do that you may find that the circular target marker moves away. This is due to the effect of compression of the prostate but this doesn't matter. The idea of the MRI fusion is to identify the target area of the prostate and then we use our mental picture to align the biopsy track with that area of the prostate which was previously identified. After taking the target biopsies I will then press the RVS button on the console to move into the standard mode for prostate biopsies. I then press the real-time biplane button on the screen and take standard six cores from each lobe. These will be sent separately. This gentleman's histology confirms a Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate adenocarcinoma in all cores taken from the target area. The right lobe cores standard biopsies were benign. In the left lobe standard biopsies some of the cores did pick up the cancer which was predominantly identified on the target biopsies. Hitachi's real-time virtual sonography combines real-time ultrasound with MR imaging, improving diagnostic confidence and the accuracy of therapeutic interventions by providing better visualization of the lesion and effective needle guidance. Displayed side by side on the same monitor, the urologist can easily view the co-registered multiplanar reconstruction of the MRI with the corresponding plane in the ultrasound image. This offers the advantage of real-time feedback of needle insertion and positioning within tumours. Fusing both modalities provides a step forward and improved accuracy over cognitive fusion. The advantages that RVS brings are significant. Firstly, it puts improved navigation in the hands of the urologist delivering diagnostic and therapeutic intervention, which can be performed in a familiar clinical setting 
often as an outpatient procedure. The superior real-time guidance using B-mode ultrasound can be supplemented with colour Doppler, contrast enhancement or even real-time tissue elastography modalities or can be displayed simultaneously with the corresponding multiplanar reconstructed MR image. Up to four different MR sequences can be imported and then easily toggled between in the fusion mode. This allows information of the target location from T2 weighted, diffusion weighted and even dynamic contrast enhanced sequences to be combined and evaluated. It has the potential to reduce the number of biopsy cores using a targeted approach, employing either a transrectal or transperineal biopsy route, thereby offering the opportunity to reduce biopsy time and improve workflow. RVS is available across a number of platforms and is compatible with all dedicated urology transducers. The Hitachi range of equipment offers versatility, delivering reliability, ease of use and excellent image quality tailored to your specifications and requirements. The Hitachi dedicated endocavity transducer range for urology applications includes the CC531, a convex convex electronic biplane array transducer providing simultaneous visualization of both transverse and longitudinal planes in real time. With multiple frequencies and high resolution imaging, this transducer offers precise needle guidance during prostate biopsy. The U533 biplane option incorporates a convex array for the transverse plane and a linear array for the longitudinal plane. Ideal for needle placement guidance during therapeutic intervention such as brachytherapy or cryotherapy and for transperineal targeted biopsies. The V53W is a monoplane N-fire transducer generating a wide 200 degree field of view for complete imaging from base to apex. All are lightweight in design with flexible cables delivering reliability with excellent image quality and importantly are compatible with advanced technologies such as real-time virtual sonography, fine flow and colour Doppler, Hitachi real-time tissue elastography, contrast enhanced ultrasound. The advantages that RVS brings are significant. Firstly, it puts improved navigation in the hands of the urologist delivering diagnostic and therapeutic intervention, which can be performed in a familiar clinical setting, often as an outpatient procedure. In summary, Hitachi Real-Time Virtual Sonography is a visionary, user-friendly navigation tool that allows you to extend the diagnostic and therapeutic value of your ultrasound platform. Superior image guidance with fast, easy co-registration can increase diagnostic accuracy while offering the potential to reduce the number of biopsy cores taken. RVS could revolutionize prostate cancer diagnosis and management through accurate localization of many prostate cancers and paves the way for focal therapy.